up ahead. Well, I thought uh, I thought we were done burning, but. Uh... Come on, buddy. Look at that. This is still burning. Look what I found. We've got a fire. Hey guys, Dusty Becker, Cross Timbers Bison. Welcome back to the channel. Thank you guys for watching us. Got some work to do today. Got a lot going on. I always say that because we, we always do have a lot going on. But, uh, Something I do want to show you is I do want to take you guys to the post burn area where we had that, that awesome, awesome fire. As you can see, very exciting, very productive, well organized, and uh, it just all went smooth. And uh, I can't wait to see the results in the uh, spring. That's basically where you see it. And so I'm excited uh, to show that and, and see all that green come through. It's going to be beautiful. And in the meantime, uh, over the winter and stuff, we'll be building fence and whatnot. So, and then uh, going to load up a squeeze chute for my buddy today. Hanging out with Betty here. I've been wanting to. Uh, do this and get rid of it basically i just don't need it but this old calf shoot here slash goat sheep shoot maybe this is part of the original um thor jeez boy original uh, corral that was it was already here when i bought the property they had this calf shoot here and then they had a head gate right here um, that i've had to load bison out before with one of the things about this is it's in really good shape uh, doc come over here and commented about it and he said that is uh that was such and such brand and you can see it on there but it's uh it's made in like the 70s or something and it's been there for a while i'm, I'm sure but it's actually made in eight oklahoma and these were really popular at one time but my buddy jake uh, you've probably seen um he helped me on the fire and whatnot but he's been wanting this he's got some hair sheep i believe he wants this and i said you can have it i, I want it out of this working area and we don't use this pen i think at some point we'll use this pen i've had to chainsaw some trees out still need more work to do but i think we can use it as a pen at some point um i had to get out the torch and i had to uh cut the frame off of this post right here so i've got it cut off and now it's ready to go i'm gonna get it with the skid steer i think i can run my pitchforks right through here and uh, break it loose and uh, lift it up and I'm gonna load it on the trailer for Jake so he can take it and reuse it. I mean, all it needs is really a new platform in it maybe, and then uh, it should be good to go. So just repurposing some more materials around here. I did get rid of the head gate right here. Uh, I didn't mention that, but I had a head gate here, cut it off and gave it to another friend, Kevin Birch. And so, hey, we're reusing this stuff and I'm just giving it to some friends that wanted it and needed it. And so I'm glad it's going to somewhere good where it can be used. So we're gonna go take a look down at the uh, burn area and uh, see, let's go see what it burn up. the gate and they think it's time to rotate. Time to move pastures. Not today. Sure did look pretty. There you go. 
guys are hiding in the woods. Big Joe, Big Joe, Big Joe. Looking pretty, buddy. Hey, everybody. Not much more red dog. Let's do some cubes. Everybody's good here. You guys think my gate's bent? Just a little bit. Just pulled down here what I call Pecan Grove or Pecan Hollow. There's, when you first pull into this pasture, here's where the fence that we need to work on, Cole and I tore down. When you pull down here, you see this massive old, old pecan tree. And I love this, this tree. Here is uh, one of the northernmost part of this burn. And uh, as soon as I pull in here, there's some, uh, a, a doe and a fawn right here. And there's some deer laying down right in here in this black. That is awesome to see as you could see the, see them running away from me a little bit but just a good sight right there i've got some redmond uh, trophy mineral block and some feed i'm going to actually go put it out here this is where they like to hang out so i'm going to go over here in this corner it's kind of a draw area back here and i'm going to put it out and um, see what they think about it make it oh wow wow uh when i was here the other day this was still up oh my gosh but i saw it was on fire there's actually a rubber tire around this an old rubber tire was set here and i wasn't sure what they were doing but it, this is amazing this is six days after the burn and it's still burning that heat wow a lot of this is burning and uh that's fine i'm not a huge fan of these uh hackberry trees this is uh quite the sight knowing that this is still burning pretty interesting and uh enough that this is a big tree that that gives you any size index of uh this tree and see i told you there was a tire around it and here is the uh metal that was wrapped around and a barbed wire was wrapped around this tree and uh, i think uh it was set there a long time ago obviously when this, these trees were smaller and uh it grew it grew in them and then it caught on fire from the burn which was fine don't need rubber tires out here and in the meantime it uh must have had a dead place here in this tree in this hackberry and got to the core of it and here we are still burning six days later this is actually where it can get dangerous my uh ethan part of the burn from the nrcs said hey uh it's gonna get windy today this was yesterday he said it's gonna get windy today you might want to go around and check your trees um, because me and him found some trees that were burning like 30 or 40 foot high some dead trees but here on this one <laughs> he was right and see the wind's blowing it's blowing the ash into me but uh six days later and this is still burning and obviously enough to knock this huge hackberry down elm tree down just amazing uh how big this tree is you guys can't really see how big it is but it's a good sized tree and i can't believe it knocked it down so it must have had something dead in it but this is where it can get crazy is uh you have to really check your post burn stuff because 
if the wind blows and picks up enough, it can throw enough um, fireflies, whatever you want to call it, um, into some dry matter. Now, the good thing about this one is it's in the very center of our burn. It's in the very center, and I don't know if you can hear it, but uh, there's a creek is right there running, which is also a good thing. So more than likely, if anything gets down in here, it's just going to burn uh, leaf matter and uh, limbs and whatnot, but the creek is right there. So that is a good thing. If we're on the edge of the fire boundary or a fence line, now we've got issues to deal with. We're probably going to have to uh, really soak this and get it away so it won't spread and grow, but just really interesting and just little notes like that. When you do burn, you always got to take precaution and know that stuff still could be burning. And obviously, I'm going to have to come down here and get it out of the way because this is the draw I was talking about where I was wanting to put a feeder or put some uh, deer stuff right here. Some uh, trophy mineral from Redmond I was going to put right here. And I guess I can go ahead and put it here. It don't matter. But now it's uh, completely in the way of our path. And this is where we, a place we like to take Brooks to hang out. But tree down. kind of a, the far west side of the uh, burn unit now and my property line runs across there kind of where you can see the black versus uh, the pasture and uh, again another big pecan tree right here that I love but uh, so this is an area where it got real interesting with Cole and me and Jake uh, this is where the fire was really building up and we came across with the, with the head fire along the north side of it which means that north wind will push it south is basically what happened and and then when it when that fire starts to build up kind of creates its own uh sort of combustion or wind and it creates this uh, sort of vortex whatever you want to call it its own tornado its own gust of wind with the north wind it got kind of interesting there for a moment and we had to bail out because we couldn't see uh we were taking Boys, we out a lot of smoke and stuff and uh, we laugh about it of course today but um it was an interesting spot at one point and then i was worried about ethan and where he was at what he was doing, watch it ethan uh, because he was on the leaf floor trying to uh blow the line out or trying to kill it and right here this is a, a spot that we kind of I, I, we didn't do a very good job of and I'll take the blame of it. We should have came across here uh, and uh, Daniel and Richie were in front of us lighting it and I should have came across and, and knocked it out with the water before we ran around it. Now it's a cinder block building. It's old. The fire didn't damage it at all. The real barn, the barn we wanted to really take care of the most was this one right back here and it's actually a nice wooden barn. So we wanted to protect it for sure. Other than that, this is a pretty cool area. It looks like a war zone, um, but uh, it won't look like this in four months, I promise you. And hopefully get some moisture between here and there, and this place will look so much better. And I can't wait to see what it's gonna look like. The deer will be traveling in here. And eventually, there'll be some bison out here. A power pole also burnt, caught on fire. This power line is old, and I did pull cedar trees out of some of the poles uh, around it so they wouldn't catch on fire but one of them did catch on fire it was that rotted and that line is actually down right over there so that'll be interesting I, this thing hadn't been used in i don't know a long time so uh, i'll probably need to notify the electric company that owns that and let them know that there is a power line down and uh, they they did come out here a long time ago and told me that these poles need to be replaced so 
Um, maybe that's a good thing if uh, they already uh, admitted that the poles need to be replaced because they were obviously rotten and the fire eas easily started on them. You guys are wondering what all these little mounds are right here? Those are fire ant mounds. <laughs> Those suckers are big. Fire ant mounds. This is a prime example of what we wanted to accomplish here. Now, this field is full of these right here. There's tons of them that were in this pasture. Not specifically this one. There's some in it. But over there in that 20-acre uh, unit. But this is a great... This is exactly what we wanted. This is a cedar. Juniper is what it is. Uh, none of us really like it. I like to put it up inside my office. That's about it. <laughs> Good for decoration. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so there was enough fuel under here. And like I explained in my fire video, there's enough fuel right here to uh, light the bottom of it up. As dry as this has been all summer, you know, these things were already dry as it was. Uh, they were green, but there's enough fuel to get underneath the base of this and take this sucker out. Now, this one will, is obviously going to be dead. What we'll probably have to do with my skid steer, the tree pullers come in here, clip it and pull it up and stack it off or throw it away somewhere because the stub will stay here for a long time until it, it eventually rots away or we burn again. So um, it is left ugly, but it did kill it and it will not regrow. Cedar will not regrow right here in this spot. So... Look at that big old pecan tree out in the middle of this field. Love it. So we'll probably have to pull a bunch of trees, dead trees like this, just for uh, manicure purposes and whatnot, just to get rid of it and get it out of here and clean this pasture up. And there's some, um, some other trees out there as well that we may have to clean up. But we definitely tried to save the pecan trees if possible. Here's another area I want to point out. You guys recognize what this is. We've dealt with this for since we've been on this property. But these are blackberry bushes, wild blackberry bushes. And uh, the summer has been so dry, just like I mentioned about the cedars being so dry. The blackberries, a bunch of them actually turned brown and uh, died. Sort of not died, maybe just going dormant during the middle of the summer when it was so hot and going through the drought. So a lot of these were already sort of charred and dead had dead dead leaves on them and so when this fire came through it was just like fuel and uh you can see this unit did really well this was all blackberries now i'm not sure why i didn't catch those but look at opened up this right here i mean this is probably a uh, 40 by 80 area that it uh could potentially completely clear out all we got to do is come back and burn this now because we've got black here the creek is right here and we've got black right here. So we could actually come back and burn these on our own, clear and get all of this cleaned out and get rid of these things. Now they may shoot up in several places come the spring, but that's where we can spray them and stay on them. And you can get rid of these things. As I've been told, it takes maybe four or five years and you can get completely rid of them. But what we did here is we opened up grazing ground right here from these invasive wild blackberries that have taken over in certain parts. But this is a great burn and it worked out for us in this unit. Well, here we are on top of the hill, kind of halfway between this, right in the middle of this burn unit. Um, so we've got 40 acres right here and then I'm standing in the other 40, but I told you we were gonna come back to this uh, place right here. Had my skid steer with me that one day, but I uh, told you I'd come back here and show you what this looked like. I told you it'd be all black. The only place it's not black is where you have a dry pond out here in the middle, but uh, just a cool sight. It don't look very pretty right now. Just give it a little bit of time, but I told you it look a lot different. Here, got some more smoke. It's 
go see what's going on. here again another spot six days later top of that tree's burning the tree Ethan and I saw that was still burning the day of the fire was here and uh, was about 40 foot tall it's still going right there but look what's burning we got a fire this fire picked up look at here Old wood post piled up right here, burning. There's some barbed wire. Doesn't take much. Just a little bit of something to fall, and then you have a fire that starts over. Yeah, look here, folks. Glad I showed up. Super dry, and look what started over again. We've got a fire. Glad I came out here. So the good thing is, the reason this didn't burn the other day is because we had a little bit of moisture and it was damp in this area. Now that it's been dry a couple of days and the wind's picked up, it's uh, we've, we've got a fire here and uh, we've got dry fuel. But the good thing is, is it's blowing right this way. The wind is out of the north again, which is great. But our black line, you can see, is right over here. Our, our fire line is right through here, and all this is contained within the black, which is a good thing. But this is where this is where you have to be very careful and keep an eye on things because stuff like this. Well, it is a good thing that I came out here and checked this because I uh, went ahead and called the... Uh, murray county dispatch and let them know that hey uh if anybody calls that there's some smoke uh out here on chickasaw trail it is uh this fire that has reignited so actually if you guys didn't know i may not have mentioned on the actual fire uh the other day we had a uh, davis fire department was here they had a single engine and two men i believe here helping us out which very thankful for that as well. So they kind of already knew when I called them and talked to them about the burn, they knew that we burnt last week. And so I told them that it has lit again and that it was burning, but the wind is out of the north and blowing south away from the highway, which is a good thing. But, and I also told them that it's inside the black, which is another good thing. But um, if you're not around to really watch this, it's not something you probably want to leave, but we can always come back and burn these these woods uh, whenever we want. But if you if you got something to do and whatnot, it's kind of kind of scary. So I'll probably have to go get the water unit, and come back down here, and knock this out. I'm kind of contemplating on if I should let this thing go or not. It's actually blowing this way. Here's our old line, but um, after coming out here and looking at this, you can see the leaves are actually starting to fall. And that's what a lot of it's burning in there. And plus, it's just been sitting in there for a long time. But the leaves are falling. So I think I'm going to go ahead and spray it and get it knocked out just to make sure it doesn't come across here. Because if it gets over there, that's our hay meadow. And we don't want it to burn up because it's a lot closer to uh, more homes. I got the rig now. This is just my little ag sprayer and uh, only holds 45 gallons. I just use this to spray and whatnot, my spot sprayer. Got this nozzle on it and it works just fine for stuff like this, but got it filled up. Now I just gotta find a way to get in there uh, safely and try to knock this out. It's kind of a lane right there. Let's try the back side maybe.
right here is a perfect example where you could have problems with in a fire especially uh and from a pasture is that's uh that's an old uh cow patty and so uh that stuff like that will just keep burning because it's just <laughs> it's fuel is basically all it is but we've got a tree still uh burning right here i'm gonna go ahead and try to knock some of it out it's picking up a little bit got most of the rest of the fire that was burning the leaves out it actually calmed down some since uh since i was here earlier but i'm uh, gonna go try to contain all of this but cow patties can uh can keep burning for a while so we're gonna knock this one out and be done with it gonna shove everything to the middle where it's just dirt helps just a little bit hose won't reach this far so doing my foot and there's this old barbed wire fence post I tore out some fence and left it right here for me to find lots of it well got that fire knocked out still a little bit of smoke but i got it all shoved in the very center and there's black all the way around it um i'll come check it later guys i'll keep updating you with this and how it looks and how it's responding we uh we hope for some moisture just to kind of keep this land uh stabilized and dormant as we're going into the winter and then the spring hopefully get a good boost and you'll see the difference in this place and we'll keep talking about it but we'll bring you back here to this spot and show you the difference and um in the meantime we'll keep you updated on everything and how how this is going and whatnot and how it's responding but someday someday the bison will be here out on this land uh we got a lot of a lot of work to do a lot of fence work to do but someday they'll be here thank you guys for watching if you got any comments or questions let do so below thank you guys for being a part of this all for bison right here regenerative ag taking care of uh taking care of our land right here thank you guys see you soon